the, so the video lectures, the two main courses are uh, listed below the books. Uh, you see Math 1806, and that's linear algebra. And Math 18065 is uh, deep learning and AI. And to see those, you just go to OCW, that's for open courseware, ocw.mit.edu slash courses. And then you input the course number. So I hope you, you might enjoy those videos. And then the books, uh, well, the books are published in the US, but the really good news is that uh, the first, the two main books, the linear algebra book and the learning from data book are also published in India. Uh, and you can order them directly from India. Uh, so let me go to the next slide to, to just to give you that information. Uh, the, uh, uh, so as it says, it's uh, Wellesley Publishers is the, is the uh, company in, based in Mumbai. And uh, it's, connects directly with Wellesley Cambridge Press in, in Boston. So it publishes those first two books and you see the information about, uh, it, it really does a good job of publishing. The books are hardcover, they're properly printed, they're properly posted and they're at Indian prices. Uh, so we, we just wanted to make them available in India. I know that an old book of mine Linear Algebra and Its Applications. That was the first book almost 50 years ago. Uh, that's probably on Amazon, but that's not the book that is used for teaching. And it's not the book that uh, I would recommend. The, the, the Introduction to Linear Algebra is the, is the book that's used by uh, thousands of students uh, in, in the US and in uh, world, worldwide. So, uh, I hope if you just connect to Wellesley Publishers, that's that's the main point. Okay, now uh, a little bit about AI and deep learning on the next slide. Okay, well, so let me tell you a bit of news. Uh, I just I received from the authors uh, a, a new paper which uh, describes a code that understands and solves math problems. I'm not sure what this is going to do to our classes because it, it, they tested it on my linear algebra book. And uh, the link to that uh, paper that, that, that describes things is uh, in the chat. So it's, the, the link is to archive, archiv.org, and you just need the number from the chat. And if you input that, the PDF of the paper will pop up. It has many, many authors. I'm the very last author. I'm only there because they used my problems and solved them. So I, this is a, 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 they're the first to achieve that, to, under, to be able to understand and solve textbook problems. So I don't know where that's going to take math education, but it had to happen and it has happened now. So I hope you just follow up that link and just to see what, what's going on. I, I don't know the details of how they've done it. It's, it's uh, open AI code uh, that, that can understand. Uh, they, they put in all the math problems in the world and uh, now they can solve them. Okay, and now this, is, this slide shows uh, the, the sort of basic idea of, uh, of, uh, of deep learning. Uh, so th this will go a bit fast, uh, but just, just to give you an idea of what, what the process, how, how it works to a mathematician. So it creates a function, F, capital F, and uh, that function depends on the input data V naught, and it, we have to create the weights in that function. You'll see that the weights are numbers that, that by which the, the system processes the input data. The, a, a typical problem would be 
uh, uh, recognize the digit zero, one, two, three, up to nine. So we have 10 possibilities, 10, 10 different uh, numbers. Uh, the data is a, a handwritten, thousands of handwritten numbers. So we have thousands of different people writing a three. And uh, the, so all the, that's training data. So we, we have a thousand threes, a thousand fours or more in the training data. And, and, and then from that data, we'll create weights, we'll create, put, create numbers in, and you will see how, how uh, well, this, this, that slide describes the form of the function. That's the key to deep learning is this function is, uh, is starts with a simple function F1 and then a function F2 of F1. It's a chain of functions, a chain of simple uh, piecewise linear functions uh, produces the uh, code that, uh, that, and when I say piecewise linear, I really mean uh, they are not linear. If we try to use only linear functions, deep learning would fail. It, we need some nonlinear function in there. And it turns out that we just need to use this one function, ReLU, that everybody has come, become familiar with. It's the ReLU function is zero for negative inputs and it's X, it's the, the input itself comes is, is the equals the output for when when the input is positive. Uh, so so it's it has a, a zero piece and a 45 degree piece on its graph piecewise linear. So the next slide will show a little bit. This is uh, the next slide would would show uh, just roughly. You, you, I can't this morning do uh, justice to deep learning, but we have, uh, there's a vector V1 to VP of inputs at the far left, then come, they get multiplied by these weights that we have to choose. Uh, that produces the, the hidden layer. And then we apply this ReLU function to the hidden layer. So we're in that hidden layer, comes that nonlinearity, uh, which throws away the negative components and keeps the positive components of the vector as they are. And then you, we might have 10 layers. The picture just has one hidden layer and then the output layer. So what we try to do is get those weights properly chosen so that, they, we, so that we get the correct output. Now, Best of all is to watch it happen. Uh, so really now, may I tell you about a website called playground.tensorflow.org. And here's, here it is. And you'll see it's somebody from Google created this uh, website. And it just gives, it gives us a chance to see uh, deep learning in action. So it has four examples, and uh, maybe we could click on the first first of those examples, the the which is this uh, blue dots in the center, blue blue inputs in the center, orange inputs in a circle around it, and so that's those are the inputs, the points in that picture are the blue the coordinates of the blue points and the coordinates of the orange points. And the system knows that the blue wants to be positive and the orange wants to be negative. And we're looking for a function that has that. That's, we're looking for a function of X and Y, two variables here, that's positive on the blue points and negative on the orange points. Okay, so we, this is now the training will happen. Andre has started the and it's taken 756 or 55 steps. Uh, the, the, uh, the code to find, oh, now it's taking more steps. And then can you see on the right that it has succeeded? That, that uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the approximate 
function is giving us the cor correct picture. Uh, it, it, it has separated the blue from the orange. Right. Okay. So that, that was a simple example uh, to create a piecewise linear function. Now comes a hard example, much harder. It's two interwoven spirals, the blue spiral and the orange spiral, but you see, you'll, you'll see it now. Now it will try to separate those, uh, but uh, not very successful. Um, uh, I gave it in the middle of the screen, you're seeing the, the hidden layers and, and maybe about four uh, components on each layer and three or four layers. But of course, in reality, it's thousands of layers. Oh, no, sorry, thousands, thousands of inputs, uh, maybe 10 layers, maybe uh, could be 50 or something uh, nodes on each layer. So much larger than this example, but the example is really wonderful. So, and we can create more, we can add this, this uh, code allows us to add uh, uh, playground, uh, uh, add, add uh, more layers and eventually put in enough layers and enough nodes on each layer to uh, successfully capture this uh, difficult, more difficult example. Okay, so that's playground.tensorflow.org, which, which gives you four examples to work with. Okay, that's uh, most of my deep learning uh, comments uh, today. Uh, I just, so maybe we go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, and, and to the linear algebra, and to the linear algebra. Okay, good, good. So... I, I've, Andre, I still have the recording, the message about recording in front of the, in front of the uh, picture. Andre, could you come in for a minute? Sorry, just a technical problem. How do I get that to go away? Oh, there you go. Good, thanks. Okay. Okay, so ready for some basic linear algebra? Uh, I want to go to, so we have a matrix A, and you see various matrices examples at the bottom of the slide, two by twos, there's a two row and three column example. Uh, and now I want to introduce the, so they, I look at the columns of those matrices. And I want to introduce the idea of a vector, that's each column is a vector, so the the first, uh, let me look at the one zero zero one example, the first example there. So the two columns are the one zero vector, that's one space across and no spaces up. So that's simply a vector in the X direction. And then zero one will be simply a vector in the Y direction. And now, so those are the columns of the matrix, the two vectors in the X and the Y directions for this very first example. And now I take their combinations. I take their combinations. Then, then I get a whole space of vectors. So I start again with these two columns, but when I take, suppose I take five of column one plus six of column two, that will give me the vector five, six that points off uh, into the plane. And you, you can see that I can get every vector x, y, every two-dimensional vector. I just take x of the one zero, and I add that to y of the zero one, and I've got the vector with, with the, the vector x and y for every x and y. Okay, now, now let's, that was a really easy matrix. Let's go to the second matrix. Now I have the first column is in the, in the direction of one, two. So I'll take X amount of that and Y, I'll multiply the three, four by Y and I'll add those together. So that gives me, a, a again, it's a vector in the plane. Yeah, I'm in two dimensions here. And in fact, I wanna do all combinations. 
So I want to take any number times one, two, plus any number times three, four. So those are, I'll get every, ve every vector in the plane because those, those two are, are uh, nicely, they're separate, they're independent is the right math word. Okay, now let me look at the third example there, the, the one that has three, three columns. Well, that's overkill. So the, already from a combination of the one, two and the three, four, I could get every vector in the plane. So uh, I, I allow overkill here. So uh, the vector, the column five, six can't contribute anything new. So the space, the column space for all those three matrices is, is the whole XY plane. Now, now to see, see the point, go to the next line. Now I have the vector one, 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 one. Okay, so if I take a combination of the one, one column and, then, and the other one, one column, I'm just staying on that, on that line where uh, all multiples of the vector one, one. I'm, uh, it's the 45 degree line in the plane, pi over four if I'm using radians properly. And uh, it's only a line. So the column space, those two vectors, one, one, and one, one, were very dependent, not independent. So when I take their combinations, I'm just staying on the same line. And similarly for one, one, and two, two, those are both on the line. And then, so that's a one, the line I think of, the, a line through, the, through zero, zero, uh, zero, zero will always be on the line. Uh, that's a one-dimensional subspace of the plane, which is two-dimensional space. And then finally, this ridiculous example at the end with the zero matrix, then the only vector you can get out of that is zero. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So that's the idea of column space. Oh, this slide has the idea of a row space. So I'm just going to do the same things with the rows. Uh, uh, maybe in your mind, you could, uh, if we, if we want to look at rows, but we, we think of vectors as column vectors. So I, I would like to sort of in my mind, turn those rows into columns. So the first example there will have, the, when I make them columns, we'll have one, two, three as the first column, three, six, nine as the second column. And, and what, what do we know about that matrix? Well, three, six, nine is just in the same direction as one, two, three. So when we combine those, we won't get off the line. We'll just have a one dimensional column, one dimensional row space now because I, it's the rows of A. So the column space is a line and the row space is a line. That, that, this is a wonderful fact, a wonderful fact. Actually, maybe it's the first, neat fact in linear algebra that if the column space, if the columns are all on the same line, then the rows are, the, the rows are also on their same line. I would think that there's a challenging math question. We, maybe that neuro, neural network that I spoke about at the beginning could solve it, but, but I, you should think about that. If all the columns are in the same direction, they're all on a line, then all the rows are in the same row direction. That's a beautiful fact, the first uh, fact of, of, of linear algebra. And then uh, actually, if I go down further down this, this, uh, this slide, uh, well, let me take the three by three matrix. So now we're getting serious here. We're getting into three dimensions. So do you see the, the matrix A, which is one, one columns, reading columns, one, 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 two, three, four. And then if I add those, I get three, four, five. So three, four, five is nothing new. I only have two independent columns here. And that gives me, when I take all their combinations, that gives me a plane. But now let me look at the next example. You see that, that I would call that uh, triangular matrix because it's got zeros, 
below the diagonal. You, you see the that example, one zero zero columns are one zero zero, two four zero, and three five six. So that comes from this triangular matrix. Now those those are independent. Those three directions all, are all different. And uh, if I take all combinations of those, I get the whole three dimensional space. This is the basic beginning of linear algebra to understand the column space of a matrix and the row space of a matrix. And uh, in, the, in the special cases where each of those is just a line, that those are easy. Here, here we see two dimensional ones, we see three dimensional spaces, all good. These are great examples. So I'll go on to the next slide and see what comes next. Uh, yeah, okay, so you have the idea of dependent. The columns are dependent. That means that some column is just, is not new. It's just a combination of the other columns. And uh, in other words, the good way to say it is some combination of the columns produces the zero vector. Some combination, you go out one vector along and, uh, and then come back home to zero when you have, a, have the right combination. So those are examples, again, of dependent columns. So how do I know, let me take that A3 example. You see that with letters? The, it's got these three columns, AD and BE and CF. And what I want to say is those are all, whatever the numbers are, those are all in two-dimensional space, right? They have two components, A and D. So I go A across and D up, and that gives me a point to, to, for that first column, and then second column and the third column. But now three columns have to be dependent if they're in two-dimensional space. So those, that, that matrix A3, without even knowing those numbers, I've got too many columns to, to, to be independent in, in, in 2D in a, in a plane. Okay. So, uh, so the, the column space for that A3 would be the whole XY plane and the row space would be two dimensional uh, space in, uh, in, uh, inside 3D. Okay, so that's the idea of dependent and independent columns and column space and row space. Ready for the next slide. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Oh, okay. So here we have matrices, multiplying matrices, multiplying matrices. Uh, I don't think it's really feasible for me to give you uh, uh, without writing on a blackboard the, the, how you multiply matrices. But so, so what am I speaking about here? This is, th these, these slides, come from what I call my new start in teaching linear algebra. I don't do something called determinants. That's not the place to begin. The place is to begin is with a matrix and its columns and its rows and then uh, and, and independent columns and dependent columns. So that's, that's really what this slide is about. Uh, and the result is, uh, one of a, is a key step in linear algebra. It, 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 it takes any, for any matrix A, we can write it as C times R. This business of factoring, I call that factoring a matrix into, into simple, two simpler matrices. So first I, I would need to explain how, how you multiply C times R, uh, but maybe most of today's audience knows matrix multiplication. And then, and then the second point is what are C and what is R? Well, C, or, C contains the independent columns. So, so I start with a matrix A. I look at its columns. I keep the independent one starting from the left, but a, a dependent one I throw away. I don't want any extra columns. The matrix R will account for those. So C has the, the, 
the columns that really count, but no extras, no, they're independent. And then R is chosen to tell me to, to get the, to get the right combinations of those columns to bring back A. So that's a factorization A equals C times R. And, and factoring matrices is really, uh, has become the sort of simple uh, direct expression of linear algebra. Uh, there are several factorizations that, that uh, you know. Uh, can I just mention some of the other factorizations? This, is, this one, C times R, is independent columns times, uh, well, they would be row, rows from the row space in R. So that would be the first one. Uh, another one is if you're solving linear equations, then you use elimination. Maybe let's go to the next slide and see, see what comes. Uh, Oh, here I'm factoring these matrices. There you go. Uh, just, just to see uh, that example there. You see the, uh, the matrix in the middle of the slide, which has columns 1, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5. Well, 4, 5 is a combination of them. 4, 5 is 2 times the first column plus 1 times the second column. And that's what the R tells us about. Yeah, the R will give us the information on on uh, how the how how all the columns are constructed from the independent columns. So we have only have two independent columns, one one and two three, and then that matrix R is saying the third column is two of the first plus one of the second. You you see that matrix operations are just exactly created right to this matrix multiplication C times R was exactly created to tell you these combinations. And uh, yeah, and uh, so that first, what I say below with a box around it, the first great theorem is the fact that the number of independent columns matches the number of independent rows. And the, and the homework problem I gave you was to take the case where there's one independent column and show that the rows, there's only one independent row. Well, do examples. That's how to understand linear algebra. Take a matrix with only one independent column and look at it and you'll see it has only one independent row. That's, that's the, the pleasure in linear algebra is to see these things happen, yeah. So, okay, ready for the next slide. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so this is a systematic way to, to, uh, to um, create uh, uh, C and R. It's called elimination. It invented three or 4,000 years ago and then invented again by, by uh, Gauss, the greatest mathematician who ever lived in Germany. Uh, so uh, this is a systematic, this is early in the linear algebra course, you systematically reduce a matrix, you simplify the matrix by uh, starting with A and then, uh, so my first start with this A, just so you have the idea of elimination, uh, I would subtract that first row, one, two, zero, three times that first row away from the second row. And that will, the three times one, two will give me the three, six, so it'll cancel that and I'll be left with zero, zero, five. And then I do four times the first row subtracted from the third row, and I also get zero, zero, five. And now when I subtract 005 from 005, I get an end, end with a row of zeros. And that's called the reduced form of the matrix. So, uh, and, uh, and I can throw away that zero row. So those are the steps that uh, every matrix code, every code like MATLAB for uh, uh, doing linear algebra, uh, has to do this elimination step 
that starts with an A, simplifies it to get to that matrix R. So that's the R in our product C times R. It's a really quite a beautiful part of linear algebra. Quite beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I'm giving you a chance to see what this is about. So, so, so that that this is the the math uh, that I wanted to explain in this uh, in at the beginning of this talk that that my ma every matrix A can be factored into. So, what does the matrix C contain? It contains the independent columns of A, which were column in this case column. Two was not independent of A. Two, six, eight is just in the same direction as one, three, four. So the independent columns were one, three, four, the first column, and zero, five, five, the second column. So that's the C. And then the R tells us how to combine those two columns to get all three. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, a a, a, sim, a good, I think, a good way, an active way to start the problem, start the course. You know, you, you have linear algebra offers these options. Uh, a, a typical Chinese uh, textbook will start the course with determinants. I don't feel that's the right way. I, I think this understanding vectors and matrices and matrix multiplication is 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 effective. And, and this example of producing C times R. Yeah, uh, that, that, to me, that makes sense. Um, and it would be, uh, it would be chapter one of, of, of anything that I write, write about. And, and it would become in the first, the first weeks of, of teaching. Okay, let's see what else is in this uh talk the next slide would oh yeah here's my favorite picture of linear algebra my favorite picture of linear algebra it's got those four rectangles represent subspaces oh boy can you stay with me to understand this so so suppose i have a matrix with two rows and three columns. Okay, so let me look first at the rows. The left-hand side of this picture looks at the rows of the matrix. So the row space is that top first rectangle. Well, it's a whole plane, really. Uh, the combinations of the two rows. You remember, which we have in mind this matrix that has two rows and three columns. So I look at the rows on the left side of the picture and I have two spaces there. The top one is all combinations of the rows. But below it come all vectors that are perpendicular to the rows. I want to fill the whole three-dimensional space with those two subspaces. The row space for that matrix will be a plane and the null space, the, the, per, the perpendicular vector will be perpendicular to that plane. So I have a plane and the, the line perpendicular to it. And then when I, and, and you see the two separate subspaces. And when I put the whole thing together, I get all of three dimensional space over on the left. That's the first two spaces. Now I'll go to the right side. Now, looking at the columns, those right side is about columns. So if I had three columns in the matrix, then that right side would be, uh, would, which, which again, oh, yeah, the right side, the top picture would be the column space, that combination of the columns. You've got the idea that's a space, that's a, that's a plane or a 3D or 10 dimensions. You're allowed to think now into 10 dimensions. So I have a matrix that's maybe 10 by 10 matrix. So it's got 10 
columns and it's got 10 rows. And these are pictures of 10 dimensional space. Uh, so th this is the picture to get to grasp. Not necessarily to grasp it. I, I wouldn't want you to learn all of linear algebra in one hour. That would be, uh, I would take all the fun. This, but this is, the, this is a picture to understand. And then it gives you an idea, not only of individual vectors, like one, four, six, three, there's a vector in four dimensions, but gives you an idea of combinations of those vectors, planes in four dimensions, three-dimensional subspaces in four dimensions. Okay, and, 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 and the dimension of the space uh, is, is that number R. The, the, the column space and the row space, both of those have, there are R independent rows, then there are R independent columns. That's the, the great fact that those top two spaces are the same size. Okay, good. So uh, let's go to the next, uh, uh, next slide. Oh yeah, well, I haven't uh, said a lot about e equations here. I'm giving you vectors, but not equations. But now the simplest equation is a matrix A times a vector X giving the zero vector. What does that mean? What does AX equal zero? What, what is, what's that X, that vector, column vector X? So, so AX equals zero says, a combination of the columns of A gives the zero vector. Uh, maybe like three of the first column plus five of the second column gives the zero vector. In that case, those columns would be in A in the matrix. The three and the five would be in the vector X. And the result of taking that combination, three of the first plus five of the second would be the zero vector. So when you, com combinations that give the zero vector, though that's the same as saying A times X equals zero. A times X equals zero is a combination of columns that gives the zero vector. And then of course, linear algebra finds out about all those, com finds those combinations. That's what elimination can do. Yeah, yeah. So we look we're looking for solutions to equations. Yeah, so you're getting really a serious movement into linear algebra thought of in matrix language and in subspace language, column space and row space. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the right way. Okay, yeah, the next slide. Uh, we'll see what, it's an adventure to see what comes. Oh gosh, now I'm jumping to the end of the course. You've seen the beginning, independent and dependent columns of a matrix. Now you're seeing the very end, something called the singular values and singular vectors. Uh, and uh, 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 th this is one of the beautiful deeper results from linear algebra. And I'll explain what we're looking for here uh, using this matrix three, four, zero, five as a small example. Okay. So what is the singular value? The SVD, S for singular, V for vectors, D for decomposition, the singular vector decomposition of any matrix. So I've, for those who know about eigenvalues, eigenvalues apply to square matrices. But now matrices, we have matrices full of data. And data doesn't come in a square matrix. We, we might have, so medical data, we might have the, a, diff, a column for every patient. In, in, the, in the hospital. And we might have a row for each disease and, and that would tell us which patients have which diseases. Oh, I'm sorry, this is sort of a 
yeah. But anyway, that, that's an example. It's an example in which the number of patients and the number of diseases are different. Uh, and, and every example is, is in data is typical, is, is typically rectangular matrix. And we can't do eigenvalues of a rectangular matrix. So whatever eigenvalues and eigenvectors are, they don't work when the matrix is, they, they don't, they, they really don't always work. Singular values are an extension that does always work. So that's, let me, let me just jump to showing, to giving you an idea of what singular vectors are, and, and, and the singular values are about. Okay, so now I'll look at these numbers. So my matrix is three, three, four, zero, five. And if I take the combination one of the first column plus one of the second column, I get the column vector, I get the answer three, nine, right? Column one plus column two is three, nine. Now let me look on the top right here, A times V2. Now I'm subtracting those two columns. I'm, I'm taking one of the zero five and I'm subtracting off three, four. So that gives me a minus three and a one. Okay, so I have just, you may say I've just take, I've taken my matrix and I've chosen two very special vectors, one, one and minus one, one. What, what is special about those two vectors? If, if you look at the vector one, one, and the vector minus one, one. Think about those in the plane. So one, one is headed off at 45 degrees and minus one, one is headed off at minus 45 degrees or, or 135, whichever way you wanna go, right? Those, those vectors one, one and minus one, one are perpendicular to each other. For between a 45 degree vector and a minus 45 degree vector is 90 degrees. So one one is perpendicular to minus one one and we test that as many will know by the dot product, uh, one times minus one and one times one, they add to zero, that's the signal for a perpendicular vectors. Okay, so we have two perpendicular inputs, one one and minus one one. Now look at the outputs. So the outputs are three, nine and minus three, one. So three, nine is in the direction of one, three and minus three, one is in the perpendicular direction. Those two outputs are perpendicular. So we have found exactly what the SV, what singular values are looking for. We have found perpendicular inputs, one, one and minus one, one, that give perpendicular outputs. That's a very, very special situation. We had to look hard for those vectors. Well, if the matrix was big, we would, have, we would need MATLAB's help or a computer's help to find these special directions which are perpendicular inputs, and then they give perpendicular outputs when I multiply by A, when I, when I take the combination of the columns of A. So they depend on A. They, so again, let's look below the, below the, below the, the line for the bottom three lines. We have orthogonal is the same as perpendicular. So we have orthogonal, vectors in the row space, and we have orthogonal vectors in the column space. The row space uh, shows, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and they're orthogonal, they, but they can be multiplied by different numbers, like three nine is three times the one three. So, so the, 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 the scaling factors go into these numbers sigma. Okay, so what's the point? The point is that every matrix, rectangular matrix or square, will, there are these orthogonal perpendicular vectors that go in and they produce perpendicular vectors that go out. 
out, coming out from multiplication by a. Or I take or thought the right, right it, it takes uh, MATLAB to find these vectors or any any matrix code to, to do the SVD, singular vectors. All I want to do is tell you that uh, perpendicular is special and we can find perpendicular inputs and that give perpendicular outputs if we know how and uh, so this is a topic that would come at the very end of my linear algebra course, but you would see it in that series of lectures on open courseware. Okay, so let me see what's in the next uh, slide. <clears throat> oh, this is putting together the pieces that come from the singular values and singular vectors. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think I can, uh, explain it, it you'll, you'd need a proper written explanation so my linear algebra book or another linear algebra book would would uh, it would have the, these singular values after eigenvalues eigenvalues are sort of oh it typically come first and they only apply to square matrices i hope this is helpful to you we're really like as you see by watching one of my lectures, uh, we're we're now sweat. We swept from the beginning weeks of the linear algebra course to the ending weeks, but this singular value stuff is is truly uh, full of applications for 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 all matrices. Okay, uh, so that's. That's, uh, that's about what we can do on singular values at the end of the course. And in, in between come the idea of, or, of perpendicular vectors, uh, the dimensions of spaces, uh, all, all, and, and eigenvalues and eigenvectors and determinants. We give determinants a chance, but not at the beginning. Okay, so the next slide after that is Ah, picture of the, this is a picture of this singular value stuff. So, so that singular values, it, 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 I said that factoring a matrix into simple matrices is, is the key to linear algebra. And, and these singular, singular value decomposition stuff factors every matrix into a rotation times a stretch along the axes, you see that in the middle here, times another rotation. That's really amazing that every matrix can be expressed. This is just the beautiful way to break up any matrix in high dimensions and rectangular, M by N, M, M rows, N columns. And here it's two by two so we can have a picture in our plane. So every matrix is a rotation, a stretch, and a rotation. And uh, that those three parts are the three factors in the singular values and singular vectors. Good, good. So that's a, that's a taste of what, uh, of, 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 of especially beautiful part of this subject. All right, let's go on to see what we see next, next slide. Okay, this was one more wonderful fact about the singular values. And that fact is that if you keep just the biggest ones, the biggest singular values with their singular vectors, you're getting the best, if you keep just the first singular value, the top one, the largest one, then that's the largest one dimensional approximation to your matrix. Because we have to approximate a giant data matrix. That, that's our purpose here. We, uh, we have a matrix of data that might have 10,000 entries. We can't do all the calculations we want to do. We, we want to simplify it. We want to simplify it to a matrix that only has one independent vector, one independent column, or one independent row, and we want to choose the best one. We don't want to just take the first row 
and first column, we want the best row and the best column to approximate our big matrix. And uh, singular values and singular vectors tell you the best approximation. Good. Okay, that's, uh, again, we've had a taste of linear algebra from the beginning and now linear algebra high, high level. Okay, let's go to the next slide. And that, that, if I want to make a picture of what I've just talked about, you see all those little X's, those represent the, we're, they're in two dimensions. Those represent the columns of my matrix. I don't know how many X's I've got there, about 30. But, I, but they, they're typically for data, they're in a, they're, they cluster in a direction and the singular values tell you that direction. So the singular values tell you how to, how to find the closest direction for a whole lot of data points. So it's data science, but it's linear algebra. Okay, next slide, finally. Uh, the next slide. Have we got the next slide? Oh, no, well, no. So let's go back, let's go back if we can. Yeah, that, I'm sorry, I see that that's the last slide. So let's go back to the earliest slide, maybe the slide with the, with the th three, with the way, way back to slides two and three for the very end. That big picture we'll see again. Uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, oh, well, this allows me to say again, no, back to that one about, this allows me to say again, that uh, to g give you a, cl a closer look uh, about wealthy publishers, because that's, that's really a, something you want to know about. Uh, it's, 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 it allows you to order uh, these linear algebra and learning from data books um, directly from Mumbai. And uh, you see at the, at the bottom is the, a, a link to the instructions. Yeah, so that's, that's again, Wellesley Publishers. Uh, I'm just sort of pleased to be able to, to, uh, to know that you could get the books uh, directly within India and not through Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that's everything. Uh,